14,246 men and women, 486 unknown soldiers, along with 954 missing in action, lying as they perished side by side. Buried and remembered in solemn uniform rows that concealed the chaos and brutality of the war that brought them here. Every day, the grounds are attended to, the headstones cared for, and the flag raised and lowered with reverence. Every day, French families, school children, and Americans arrive to pay their respects just as they've always come to honor the fallen. They prove themselves cool and resourceful. The highest praise that can be bestowed upon them is the hope that America will continue to raise such sons. In the fall of 1918, the war is almost over, but not before the bloody Meuse-Argonne Offensive, which left over 26,000 Americans dead. Men torn apart by a new kind of mechanized warfare. Killed so fast and in such vast numbers, they had to be buried in makeshift graves. Corporal Howard Ramsey recalled, this was the best these men could receive during the stress of battle. But now that the war is over, these men are being put in a more fitting resting place. Creating this fitting resting place would prove to be a daunting and gruesome task. Companies of African-American soldiers were ordered to comb the war-ravaged fields and forests in search of shallow, improvised graves. And for years, they recovered, transported, and laid to rest America's fallen in a cemetery on French soil near the town of Romagna, where some of the heaviest fighting took place. This land would later be given to the United States by a grateful French nation and become known as the Meuse Argonne American Cemetery. For families back home who not long ago had watched their loved ones head off to war, the loss was overwhelming. The distance only added to their grief. In the past, mothers, wives, and other family members had traditionally tended to the graves of fallen soldiers. But now, with so many dead so far from home, families were asked to make a heartbreaking decision. Did they wish to bring back their loved ones for burial at home, or leave them in France alongside the men and women they had fought with? The uncertainty of having their husbands, sons, and daughters buried overseas anguished many families. Then, as friends and relatives visited the temporary cemetery, their letters home brought a measure of comfort. Dear Aunt Rita, wrote one visitor, with our flags flying over these rows and rows of crosses, it's impossible to describe the feeling it gives one. The men whose names are on those crosses will never be forgotten. I'm sure your son would rather be buried at Romagna. The mothers and widows, whose children and husbands died in the war and were buried overseas, longed to visit the graves of their lost ones. In 1929, these Gold Star mothers successfully lobbied Congress to fund pilgrimages to Europe. One mother was Eunice Mitchell, who traveled to visit the resting place of her son, Lieutenant Robert Mitchell. 
Like other mothers and widows, she was heartened by the warm reception she received from the U.S. Army and the French. Mrs. Mitchell was also relieved by the beauty of the now permanent Meuse Agun American Cemetery. The journey was more difficult for African American mothers and widows. Despite the serenity of these pilgrimages, African American women traveled in segregated groups, even though their fallen loved ones lay buried without regard to rank, religion, or race. Those not treated equally in life, at last, received equal treatment in death. The United States government later transferred responsibility for the cemetery to the American Battle Monuments Commission. To this day, the men and women of the commission ensure that those Americans whose remains lie overseas are properly commemorated. As you visit these graves, remember these were ordinary men and women from all stations in life. Husbands, sons, daughters, citizens, and immigrants who once, hopeful and courageous, came to fight alongside the French, America's oldest ally, and help liberate the nations of Europe.